A generous man will be blessed. Proverbs 22, 9. What would you do with a million dollars? Buy a house, a car, maybe a boat? Throughout life, I've always been more of a saver of my possessions, especially money. However, I've always been a person who likes to spend money, especially if it wasn't mine. I love the feeling of being financially stable, yet also the financial freedom. I imagine myself as some rich guy living in a big house with all the stuff I could ever want, not knowing there's so much more to finance, such as earning, spending, saving, investing, etc. That sucks because as a kid, I would think if I just save my money, I'd be rich someday. I would always dream of what I could do with a million dollars. Buy a big old house on the beach right next to my friends and we can hang out and play video games all day long. <laughs> Yet, I would always think that money could make my life so much simpler. I would have less stress, no worries, and fast cars. Yet because we are human, we become lazy and don't focus our attention on the important things in life. Also remember wishing that I would spend more time, my time more beneficial in middle school. I remember coming home from school and going, heading straight to my living room, grabbing a snack, and watching an episode of my favorite show, usually The Office or Psych. Now it's not bad to watch a show, but doing it every single day eventually takes up time. I wish I would have gone and improved my jump shot, maybe learn a new talent, or pick up a new hobby. And with my senior year, I wanted to focus on change. Change with my money, time, and talents. I also wanted to see how the, as, Christ, as we as Christians could spend our time and talents, how society wants us to spend them, and how personally I can use my time, money, and talents. And I also wanted to see how these things could actually improve my life but not only my life, but others around me. At first, I wanted to do it on the impact money had on the good life. Yet I also needed to discover what the good life was as a Christian. And going through these steps to understand this more led me to realize that I had to do a lot more with just money, but also how time, talent, and faith impacted the good life. This year, I was able to interview Mr. James Dryling, a successful yet quite generous businessman who bit, built his company from the ground up. Mr. Dryling gave me a quote that was quite impactful, and he said I should actually put it in my speech. He said, sufficiency for yourself and abundance for your kingdom. This quote really hit me hard and caused me to rethink about how much we need to focus on benefiting God's kingdom and what steps we can take to do this. We as Christians should be living to pursue the kingdom of God, not pursuing ourselves as much. A lot of the times, we can forget about being generous to the Forget that we can be quite generous towards God's kingdom. And God's kingdom is a fulfillment of God's will here on earth. Just like I said before, people forget this because humans are sinful and lose our ways. Yet we cannot be abundant for God's kingdom without being sufficient for ourselves. We must be able to pay ourselves first before anyone else. Just like how you have to put an oxygen mask on, first on an airplane before you put it on anyone else. Now this means you need to be smart with our savings, which means you pay for what you want and not what you need. I'm not saying that you can't buy what you want, but the next time you spend a hundred dollars, ask yourself, do I want this or do I need this? Self-care financially, mentally, and physically is extremely important. If you can't take care of yourself, how will you be able to provide for others? This was probably my main takeaway from the interview sufficiency for yourself. But how would we come about doing this? Well, on the financial side, I learned that many people overlook creating a budget. In the Bible it says, suppose you want to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Or if you lay the foundations and you're not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you. Luke 14, 28 through 29. This budget we create will create discipline and reveal just how much you're wasting. It is important to be financially stable because in today's society, there's not much you can do without money. Mission trips require money, spending food, buying food for homeless shelters require money, and even supporting your school requires money. And this is why a budget can be super beneficial and help provide st stability. But you have to create a budget and you have to be able to stick with it. Is it important to give financially 
but it's also important to give in other ways, to be able to provide your talents for God. Yet a lot of the time, people will use their time and talents for evil. And this is where I learned how to keep your talents for good. You need to surround yourself with positive people and create positive habits. This also is related to being sufficient for yourself. By surrounding yourself with good friends, you can focus more on giving and honoring God with your talents. Now, sufficiency for yourself and abundance for the kingdom is a hard balance, but it brings a good balance to your life. And there's no perfect answer for keeping your mind focused, and everyone has their weaknesses and will fail and fail again. It's surrounding yourself with positive, strong friends will be quite influential. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Do not be misled. Bad company creates and corrupts good character. Your friends can keep you in check. They can pull you out during hard times. But if you hang around a bunch of Debbie Downers, you're going to become a Debbie Downer. If you hang around people who want to get things done, you're going to be a person who wants to get things done. You need to be careful with your friends. If you want to be able to stay in shape, you need to be hanging around people who are active and eat healthy. And if you don't want to, if you want to quit drinking, maybe you should stop running on a bunch of drugs. However, <laughs> if you want to get taller, and you hang around taller friends, you're not going to get any trouble. <laughs> Another way to keep sufficiency for yourself is being able to feed yourself with positive things. This may be reading a constructive book, listening to good music, watching impactful movies, or playing the sports you love. Or this could be going to church and youth group every week. This will help create positive habits, which in turn cause you to give in a positive way. And even when you fail, God will be there to help support and forgive you. Forgive you. As Christians, we need to provide our gifts for the glory of God. I was also able to interview Mr. J Dave Sherman, an extremely God-fearing, hard-working man who commits everything he does to, for the kingdom of God. He explained to me the importance of using our talents for the kingdom of God. He explained to me the parable of the talents, which is found in Matthew 25. This is where a master gives three of his servants' talents. Two of them go out and multiply them and are rewarded. However, the third doesn't and is cast out. Personally, I don't want to be the one who is cast out. Yet, Dave also explained to me that even though one gave more than the other, they were still both rewarded. They both made it to heaven. For it doesn't matter how much you give, but if you're giving to glorify God. Now, these talents can be more than just money. They can be your ability to play sport, draw, create, or whatever. As Christians, we need to be using these talents to glorify God. We need to be extremely generous for the kingdom of God. This could be going out to help a homeless shelter or serving at your church. This doesn't quite mean you have to be go, go out and be a full-time missionary unless this is your God-given talent. And with these talents, we need to be going out and making disciples of all nations, as is said in the Great Commission. This could also mean being a leader on your basketball team or letting a kid mow your lawn even though you did already mowed it last week. To provide for others so that they can know the goodness of God. Dave also mentions you should be able to live with extreme abundance and generosity. And this is how I believe Christians should live their lives with money, time, and talent. Yet, I also wanted to know more about the non-Christian side of it. What does the society have to say about money, time, and talents? Because I hate to say it, the money, but the earth runs on money. Before Capstone, I viewed money just as a pleasure and something that brings you privilege. It is necessary in today's society, and many people can't live without it. Money helps. It helps a lot. I mean, when was the last time you spent a day without spending money? In today's society, money can get you places. It provides safety, power, and much more. But is this what everyone truly desires? No, it is not. During my interview with Mr. Drelling, I also asked him what society looks for, and he explained that modern day society, a view of the good life is flipped. Abundance for oneself and maybe sufficiency for something else. That may be a different God or nothing at all. This abundance for themselves would be material possession and self pleasure. This is truly how I viewed. This is truly how the world views money and the good life. People become obsessed and idolize earthly things. The talents they provide only benefit themselves and their generosity becomes much less. There are many people in this world today that create a ton of wealth and do give it away. However, everything they do will eventually circle back to themselves 
and benefit themselves. Society's view on life is unfulfilling, even though enough is never really enough. This abundance one seeks does not exist. Society says you've made it when you have a big house, three cars, and lots of money. This is, however, this is meaningless when there's nothing to live for. This is why I believe, as Christian, I believe the Christian life is much more meaningful and enjoyable. This is due to the fact that Christians are much more generous with their God-given talents, money, and time, and provide these things to benefit God. I learned this by being able to work with Dave. He is able to enjoy his life by serving others. He was quite wealthy, but gave it all away to serve God. He prefers to spend his time serving God and living a sufficient life. For the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I have come to come to, that they may have life and abundantly. John 10.10 10. Without the influence of God, people become more like the thief in the night. They will keep to themselves and try to fill their happiness with earthly things, such as money, sex, drugs, fame, and more. This life is hollow and empty. God created us to serve Him, serve and honor Him. Yet to be honest, it is hard to live this way as an 18-year-old in high school. Last semester, I attended Financial Peace University by Dave Ransom. This class involves a bunch of videos and lessons about finance, budgeting, and much more. This class helped me realize I, I utilize my finance. As a kid, I would always save my money. Growing older, I would treat myself to eating out a lot more and buying maybe a Christmas present to someone I loved once in a while. By taking FPU class, I, learned, I was able to learn how to create more of a budget. As I grew older, I learned that I needed more and I was much more in charge of my own money. And this brought about the challenge of overspending and seeing how much I truly spent each month. The amount I spent on fast food was painful to me. I would easily spend over a hundred bucks a month, and this may not seem like a lot, but to me it was. I want you to just think about how much money you spent each month on maybe food, clothes, shoes, Starbucks, whatever. Just thinking back and remembering the times that I would walk into Chipotle with a pre-made lunch, but then give into that burrito bowl and spend some money. This spending was unnecessary, even though it tasted so good. <laughs> This also didn't quite benefit anyone else besides me. This class caused me to refocus my view on money and not just myself, but also my future self and of course God. Yet the biggest challenge I faced was how I could live my financial life with God involved. With this, I needed some more advice, which brought me back to Dave Sherman. Interviewing Dave, he challenged me to think how I'm truly living my life, whether am I giving it my best. He emphasized the importance of giving one's talents to glorify God. And looking back on my freshman and junior, sophomore and junior year, I surely didn't do this. But this past year, I've been thinking more about how I want to utilize my talents and what to use them for. My perspective started with the amount of money I wasted on useless items, items that I didn't need. Throughout this, I learned that I, would be able to, I wouldn't be able to give as much as I wanted to. But that's all right because I'm a broke high school student. <laughs> but this doesn't mean I don't have to give, don't give at all, just in a different way. Next, I refocused on the things I did. I spent more time trying to work on things that would change me for the better. Not just to keep the same or tear me down. This included drawing, painting, uh, working out, playing basketball. Also, I became a leader on my basketball team. Uh, this helped me to give advice to younger players who needed help. I also learned more about finance and taking an FPU, FPU class, of course, and trying to plan ahead for my future self in college. This also shifted my perspective on God, too. I made it, it made it so that I truly wanted to do things to honor Him. Yet it was hard because I'm still exploring my faith and learning about the nature of God. It made me wonder if I had to do every small task benefit the kingdom of God. And even though it didn't I didn't fully put everything in that direction, it made it me so it made me want to provide my talents for good. Spending my time not making fun of people or disobeying my parents, but rather building people up and encouraging people more and try to make their lives better. 
while enjoying my life. I remember going on a mission trip to Africa last year and just how impactful this was. I saw the poverty and horrible living conditions these kids lived in. Yet I also saw the joy and happiness on their faces when our team first arrived. And just serving these kids and giving my time to them would not only bring them happiness, but it would also fill me up and cause me to feel quite accomplished. I remember all I did for one day was sandpaper and paint the walls of Astro. My friend and I probably worked on this for over seven hours. Yet when I saw the smiles on their faces, I knew it was worth it. I was able to, to provide my gifts without money. I remember the first time I also opened my own bank account and walking across the street to Target and feeling the joy and satisfaction of spending my own money. Yet thinking back on it, it was definitely not worth that five bucks for that candy bar. But since that first buy and the path it took me my speech, my perspective on money has drastically changed. I also want to challenge myself now and in the future to grow for the kingdom of God. And finally, to reinforce it, after you learn how to create a budget and become stable, after you learn how to protect yourself from society's view on money and surrounding yourself with the best people you can find, I challenge you to be outrageously generous. The Bible says it loves a cheerful giver. Generous people just live better. They smile more, they open doors for you. They focus on others' needs because they focus on themselves. They have the ability to impact self because they themselves are not broken. Now, I'm not saying I'm the most generous person. I'm not saying I have everything figured out. But I've figured out my life quite a bit more than a lot of other people. I can help teach a math problem to a kid who needs help. Or I can just encourage a friend who's just having a bad day. And these small acts can bring about the greatest amount of joy which truly is living a good life. So I ask you, what would you do with a million dollars? Thank you.